All right. All right. Welcome. Episode 20, Planet Xbox Podcast. We are back. We are live. It's another Saturday. And another week is gone. More news is gone. And right now, uh, my gameplay is on mistake freeze mode. So let's bring that back. And uh, we should get ready to get the show started. Good evening. How you doing, Mr. ILP, Lord Attic? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, you know, I, 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 I played... I played too much Spider-Man the past couple of days. Probably put my relationship in jeopardy. Uh, but you know, my girl's just looking at me. But to be fair, I, I did have like a, a like a toothache that kind of like made me up those hours. So I just like I'm not gonna sit in bed and be in pain. I'm also do something that's gonna distract me. Yeah, and I, know, I I attempted to play some Spider-Man. My I got my son uh, a copy of Spider-Man. He was excited. Uh, we played. Um, I played, uh, I played a decent amount, uh, yesterday after work. And then I played a little bit this morning and I had to get myself in to, to prepare to start working on like work stuff. Um, ow, cause I'm still in like the, the budgeting season, but, um, uh, man, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a decent game. There's some, uh, controversy, uh, surrounding it. Um, anything um else you're playing outside of Spider Man? Uh, not really. I I finally beat Persona Five. Yes, yes, you have. Uh, so you know, and I've been playing that game for a minute, and I finally beat it. Um, I've been prior to Spider Man was messing around with uh, still playing Forza. Still playing uh, Liza P. Um, Redfall. Um, messing around with that a little bit. Uh, Assassin's Creed still messing around with. I have to. I haven't married a game yet, but I think Spider Man is gonna be the one. Um, I like continue with for the remainder of the week. Cause I think it, I'll be done with it fairly soon. Uh, relatively uh quicker uh, than the other games, but um. I mean, while we're on it, I mean, we can give our uh, quick impressions, man. Spider-Man came out uh, on the, the 20th. The reviews came out on the 16th. I, I already beat it. <laughs> you did? Yeah, I already beat it. <laughs> the reviews came out on the 16th. Um, it is, uh, uh, I think it's sitting at a 91 Metacritic. Uh, I'm going to ask you since you beat it, you know, because, you know, gamers get very sensitive when you start giving your opinions on the game prior to rolling the credits um since you beat it do you agree with the 91 um if it didn't if it wouldn't have so many bugs i would agree 100 percent. but uh, the game is you know got a little bit of bugginess man you know they they, they got to do some uh you know pest control they got to hire them they got to come fix it um yeah like i feel like uh now I'll give my quick impressions on the game. I think it's I think it's a really good game. To me, I feel like it's on on par with the previous two. Um I'll just throw some No, out. I disagree with that. I think this one is on another uh is like on a complete another level than those other games. Um I'm just going based off what I've uh played so far. Um like I when I say on par, the thing is though, you got to understand like I regarded Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales so highly. So when I and, and then also considered this, right, I had just recently played uh, an, another Spider-Man game like what, a couple months ago uh, that uh, this one is shares a lot of DNA from in terms of story and um, characters. So when I say it's it's on par, one, I, I thought Miles and um spider-man 2018 were nine out of ten games right um in my opinion i thought they were both around like nine out of ten type uh i think games. i think 2018 spider-man was a seven out of ten to me miles was an eight out of ten and if it wasn't for the bugs i would give this a nine out of ten like because there was like the reason that makes this game a little bit different in terms of bugs is because there's so many checkpoints Mm -hmm. So if you do have an issue, you don't go far back too much. Yeah. Uh, but if those checkpoints wasn't there, 
it would be a different story. But even though that it's very forgiving because of these checkpoints, doesn't take away that these these bugs are there. Yeah. Um. The only thing, the issues I have that I wanted to wanted them to address or get rid of is the the thing is is like yeah, this this is an uh, an awesome story that they're telling. I like the character. I like the cast of characters. I like the I like the um, enemies this time around. He got the he got the ultra focus. <laughs> I like the enemies this time uh, this time around. I like Craven. Um, I like uh, Harry's character, um, and I like the plot. What I don't what I the thing is is that early in the game, um, I, I'm 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 running into those slow those mandatory slowdown moments. They're happening way too often. It was like the, my least favorite thing about. Spider Man twenty eighteen talking about like riding the bike and stuff. Riding the like, bike is those yeah. last. Of, is this what those Last of Us moments? Where it's like every PlayStation game has to have these Last of Us moments. Let's and see. this does have a lot of those. A lot of yeah. those moments. I, I'm not a fan of that. That it takes me out. Like for example, you know how um like and you know me, Attic. When I'm I'm when I'm on I late night, I've been falling asleep early. So I was like, you know, I'm I'm gonna play like another hour of Spider Man, right? And what happens is I run into the um you go to the science center with harry and dude i I literally started dozing off on that uh, on that area because i didn't want it because you're forced to walk so it's not like you can run through everything you got to uh talk about to all these people mess with a few things here and there and that turns me off that was one of the reasons why i like miles morales better than spider-man 2018 because it was less of that and more of just spider-man and spider-man 2018 you know, with the slowdowns with Peter Parker and Mary Jane. And then this time it's even more because you got more characters to interact with. Then they included flashbacks. It's just like, come on, man. Um, so that um wasn't happy to. I thought I was hoping that it would be less of that and more of just uh Spider-Man. The game is not as polished as pre uh, the previous two games. Um, not to say that the game is bad, uh, but it, it was just surprising to see some of the um the bugs that are uh that exist in this game and that were heavily overlooked by people the, you know reviewing even the game. even the bugs this game deserves to be in the game of the year contender list uh you know obviously we're going to get to it in the future uh and and uh here in a little bit yeah. it's how the industry handled these bugs compared to other games like starfield yeah, yeah absolutely and we can you know on that but like yeah so i i do think by the end of it yeah like a lot of people may think i'm being like harsh but i'm not being harsh on it or anything like that I was looking forward to this game to a degree. I just I just wasn't hyped for the game because, like I guess I've been Spider Man out between my son and I playing all like you know I played through Spider Man twenty eighteen maybe two or three times between PS four, PS five, and PC. Uh, played through Miles Morales uh, uh, a couple times. Then I played. Uh, I had a recent playthrough of the Amazing Spider Man two, which, uh, which again they like take place in the same setting. Um, um, and then, um, but like. At the end of the day, like the gameplay is great. Uh, they managed to improve the web slinging, which I didn't think needed in any improvement, but that's better. The traversing uh, is better. Uh, New the York traversal is, is is on another level, yeah. like an entirely other level. And what I like is they give it to you at the start. At the start like it's yeah. not one of those things where you have to unlock this midway through the game. Like the first thing I did when I actually un uh, started the game and I got a couple uh, unlock points mm -hmm. is that I put them all in traversal. I almost had it maxed out in like 20 minutes. Wow. See, I've been, I've been like messing around, like uh, playing. I've been kind of balancing it out, but um, no, they, they did a good job. Open The set pieces are great. Um, the boss fights are great. So the game is not lacking. You know what I mean? It's definitely game of the year contender. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's my short shot game. It, well, it's definitely not my game of the year. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that's going to happen that's going to uh, change that, but I think this is easily going to be a top five, top three uh, uh, game for me because, like I said, they, they can't make this game bad, right? Like I said, and, and their attempts at making it bad is with the bugs. Um, again, we're highly overlooked. So this is playing Xbox, so we're going to move on, but we are going to bring in you know, uh, the second part of this discussion about uh, the bugs and how the, you know, the journalists and commentators uh, handled the conversation in regards to how Spider-Man performs. Um, and I, I say that because other came, games came, you know, we all know that Starfield got heavy scrutiny 
And this was, even though it was Bethesda's uh, most polished game, but it had heavy scrutiny um, for anything that was odd or that wasn't right or any sort of bug that appeared uh, in the game. Um, and and people made us, like, um, rem- made sure to let everybody know. Whereas this game, um, and it's like no one wants to comment on it. And I, I want to know your thoughts on that. I mean, what comes down to it, you know, here's what I personally feel about this. I, I do feel like there was definitely some straight up ignoring stuff because I didn't see no one talking about this. And, you know, shout out to Kofi. He said he didn't address any of these issues. One person is different than the whole industry. You mean to tell me no one experienced any of these bugs? And it's not small. This game is buggy. Every time I get on Twitter, I see more and more bugs. You know, I seen like the electricity on miles stop, not stop for like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I've seen people fall through the map on a variety of times. Mm-hmm. I had a, a time where, you know how at the beginning they have you take that picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I jumped on the, uh, I jumped on the house to take the picture and I fell through it. And I couldn't take any pictures because obviously I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I had a reset checkpoint. I had to do that probably eight or nine times in the game. No. But it, it's like I told you, their checkpoints are so frequently, you never go back far. Mm-hmm. Maybe t- three or four minutes tops. You know, and I think that's what really helped this game avoid all the bugs because even when there were bugs and they had it, like most of the bugs that happened in this game, to me, I had to restart last checkpoint. You know how, like, it would tell you how to... uh unlock certain weapons all quick hey press press l1 and 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 square yeah there were certain parts that happened multiple times that if i didn't press that the moment that sucker popped up on the screen it wouldn't let me press it got a reset checkpoint yeah i i I did that's crazy now i think about it i did have moments where uh button prompts wouldn't i couldn't trigger the action after the button prompt um, yeah, game game is definitely buggy. It is definitely buggy. You know, I guess you could argue the differences in in, in bugs. Well, you know, the differences is like I'm acknowledging the bugs in, in in Spider-Man, just like I acknowledge the bugs in Starfield. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people act like that shit didn't happen on yeah. on, on, on Spider-Man. Yeah, in our reviews, even yeah, I forgot we yeah we both did the Starfield review and we both talked about even I think we even talked about the bugs that was there before the patch. Cause remember after the day one patch, the like the the biggest the most obvious bugs, which is like the ball to people bug and the no face bug, uh, were pretty much gone because I didn't experience any of those after the patch. Uh, but that was also in the middle of our re- review period. But um. Yeah, we we've, we've addressed it, and we were essentially. And never, it's crazy, because even dating back to Gears, was it five? The review coverage, and you talked about the uh, ice block not appearing on your your game and whatnot. Like it, it's like the stand- differences between uh between the series, uh, the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S, because yeah. I had an S. I never had yeah, an X. Yeah, you didn't get the X, yeah. And that, that's the reason I refused to have an Xbox Series S, because I was abused <laughs> when I had that shit in, in, with the Xbox One generation. And I won't do it again. And, and you know, we, we talked about that then. And, and, and it just feels like, you know, and I know people because of where this is going in the Weapon World community, mm-hmm. they're going to clown us. They're going to sit there, going to say this, going to say that. They seem to watch... Weapon will for positive Xbox news and watch us for negative uh, Xbox news. Uh, uh, they it's not they they watch Weapon will for positive PlayStation news. Yeah. My bad. And, and I guess they watch negative too because Jack Move, you know, he seems to be pretty consistent on calling them out. So you guys make it entertaining regardless. But I feel like the, like the, the community only really watches Xbox negative Xbox news, and you know, sadly, we ain't really got many. Yeah. So it's like it's like the, the these are not the the news you've been looking for. Like <laughs> And what I want to do is like I'm going to say shout out to I want to give a shout out to uh you know Red Dragon for um uh, every for pretty much giving us minute by minute updates on Starfield, its performance, its steam standings, its uh player beatings, right? And 
he was nowhere to be found on these um, Spider-Man things, right? It's like, it's insane the amount of like uh, hip, hip, hypocrisy that, you know, lives within uh, the community. Um, but yeah, like, um, again, people like, it, it is what it is. Yeah, does Spider-Man deserve to be game of the year uh, and nominee? Sure, why not? Um, do I think it deserves this 91 Metacritic uh, score? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. And I'm not saying it's a bad game. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's a crowning achievement. I do not think it's a crowning I think, achievement. I think it deserves that. Uh, it deserves a 91 if the game functioned correctly, uh, but it doesn't. So I would say I would put this around an 87, 86, 88, around that, around what the first one was. Because mm-hmm. this game, in all sense, is, is miles, <laughs> miles better than mm-hmm. the original one, which is funny because there's a character in that name, Miles. And it's just like they did a good job with, you know, telling the story between Peter and, and Miles, especially mm-hmm. when Peter gets the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the black suit. They did a fantastic job of everything in the game. Like, literally, uh, almost I everything. I can't wait to get to that point. I'm not quite there yet, the black suit. Like, I remember how I had a lot to say about the boss system mm-hmm. in, in the original one. Mm-hmm. Completely over, redone over. The bosses have very in-depth systems multiple stages of a fight sometimes you'll chase them through town the city like that's what i wanted but i felt like the original spider-man was like we need the sinister five or sinister six Mm -hmm. so we uh but we don't have the budgeting to make them all have in-depth fights so we're gonna pair them off and make them do the same three moves over and over again (laughs) yeah yeah, uh, no, I'm with you there. Um, but yeah, yeah, and, and I can see that coming, even just in like the uh, like the stuff that were revealed to us, like with the um, reptile, and then um, once the game got closer to launch, we saw what you know you get to fight Sandman at the uh, opening of the game, which they did a good job opening the game and teaching you a lot of the new stuff. Because the reason why you had to use the flight uh, uh, move is because you had to go across a bridge, right? Um, in the previous uh, games, we didn't have access to that side of the the city so um no they did a really good job because even when you're gliding and Mm -hmm. you get on the the water you glide over the water for a Mm -hmm. couple of seconds so it gives you enough time to where you can snatch onto something else uh shoot yourself back up into the uh to the air and continue gliding like Mm -hmm. you know i didn't to transparent i didn't do anything sidewise almost like nothing because that is the negative that I don't really see a lot of people talking about. I don't care about none of the stuff. Like, like it's just like the book bag stuff. Like none of the book, but none of the side activities mm-hmm. really gauged me to do anything. And the majority of them was just connected to, oh, if you do this, you'll be able to un- uh, unlock abilities. But the problem is the Spider-Man's already overpowered. Like I, I mm-hmm. think I, un- I think I upgraded strength once and focus once. That's all. And health yeah. once. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, what mode did you play? I'm playing on spectacular. Um, no, oh, I played on normal. Like I, I don't do any of that extra shit. I like, think I did it only because I think I'm I'm, I'm Spider Man out, and I know what to expect. So I just started off with spectacular. Crazy. The crazy thing is, my son actually did it too. But I think he did that by mistake. He ain't know he's playing on hard. But he's he's. I think he's. Me and him are like almost neck and neck in the the story of where we're at. Well, I haven't I played surprised. spectacular, but. You know, I didn't die too much playing, playing normal, like at all. Uh, I think it's spectacular. Uh, it's just that I'm like, I guess I, I've died a couple times. Um, but the thing is, it was just more so getting used because you know you got the new the parry system in the game now, right? And, it's good. It, it's it, really it is, good. It's really good. It is really good. So it was getting used to that. Like, okay, okay, now like using the parry system because I was so used to just trying to circle my way out you know the the, uh the using the dodge button um out of like strong moves and stuff like that but um uh they did they they did a good job now question with spider-man moving on to the next with spider-man scoring a 91 on metacritic and super mario wonders scoring a a 94 93 what the fuck it is um what game gets dropped from contention of game of the year something third party and, and uh, with Alan Wake, still and part of pending. me does. Part of me, 
part of me, I don't even think Alan Wake. Yeah, I don't know. Chance. I don't know why yeah. people think Alan Wake is going to boot something out. I don't. I don't know why, but but that's the, what people. Are I don't thinking. think Mario's getting nominated. You don't? Because, you know, they've done it before, but they don't normally give two exclusives nominations like from the same platform. Mm-hmm. They've done it in the past, but in the past is. But but that's the only time you can tell. That and was, uh, Mario did Mario Odyssey get nominated for Game Boy? And Game? Mario and Zelda got uh, Zelda and Horizon Forbidden uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and was there another PlayStation exclusive they got? Actually, you you you're right. You know they they do Last of Us I, and I, Ghost of Tsushima in 2020. Yeah, actually, you God think about that Spider-Man, name in them? God of War and Spider Man 2018. Yeah, you 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 right. <laughs> I guess to me. It's like, at that point, you know, if they do let Mario go wild, <laughs> I think Starfield gets dropped. <laughs> uh, if Starfield gets dropped, I will, uh, I'll riot. I, like, here's the thing about this year, and shout out to your posters in the back. You, you pretty much have a good summary of the year. You got Mario Wonder. Uh, for Nintendo, you got Spider Man for PlayStation, and you got Starfield for Xbox, which I think all deservingly deserve to be nominated in uh, game of the uh, game of the year. Um, I think what what happens is is that see if if it wasn't for Mario Wonder, I see I it's no way I thought the Zelda game would win because I felt like it would have that you know that God of War effect, um, where yeah, yeah I feel I, you like. When you were saying that, now I really see that, you know, they could definitely put Mario in that. Yeah. It's just like, to me, it, okay, even if you put, even if you put those three games, mm-hmm. it, it, why did they put Final Fantasy 16 in well, there? I think, <laughs> but I think Final Fantasy 16 is getting dropped out. If, yeah, it, I, if it's an early nomination, because you still got to consider, will they nominate Diablo? Will they, would they put it in the end, like, Sea of Stars? Will Liza P get his uh, deserve it nod? I think the only way I, I pick up the pitchfork with you is if 16's in there and Starfield's not. If 16's in the game, I'm, I'm not. I'm, no, no. I, I would. I would. If 16's in there and Starfield's not, I will pick up the pitchfork for you with you. Because right now, but you if, got. The, if the, if Diablo's in there, I can, I, I can see why people would make an argument. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even Mario Wonder. That that's still a very high quality 2D Mario game, mm-hmm. but Zelda and Baldur's Gate are the only, and maybe even Spider Man to a degree, uh, but Zelda and Baldur's Gate for sure. Those two games are the only games I think you can arguably make it an argument saying are better than Starfield. Uh, you know, I personally think Baldur's Gate's better than Starfield, but I love Baldur's Gate. You know, I didn't, I dropped Tears of the Kingdom, but I can understand why people would have that argument. I don't see how you can argue Diablo. <laughs> I don't see how you can argue that Diablo is better than it. I don't see how you can argue that um, uh, that you know Hogwarts Legacy, you know, Sea of Stars is an indie, and part of me feels like they might drop that. This is gonna be the most interesting show we've ever had in years. And it's gonna start for the nomination. Yeah, the nominations come out what? What at the end, sometime in November? Next yeah month. it yeah so that's where so so that's where the beef is gonna start and, and, and yo and, and the thing is is like i don't want to find out from twitter first i want to go on that link first i need to be on that link first. i do not want to find out from twitter you, first. you you need a bell icon that uh the video game awards because they'll tweet it first okay yeah because like it starts from there. It starts from it starts there. It starts at those nominations and the fact it's six games. And pop- Part of me thinks that Jeff gonna put Starfield in there because A, he don't want the smoke. <laughs> and B, let's be real, it's about entertainment. And it's better if there's a game from every platform. Yeah. I think that's the reason I don't think they're gonna put Zelda and Mario in there is because this is one of the years where Xbox can actually have a very competent game in that. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it makes more sense business-wise for him to, you know, maybe he won't, maybe he won't make the scenario happen. But he'll make it known. You know what I'm saying? You know, it'd be nice if we get all uh, all the platforms in here because, you know, view-wise, business-wise, it makes more sense for every platform owner to have a game and Game of the Year contender. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah. would be crazy, Spoon. I know this ain't going to happen. 
if not only that sucker nominate nominated, but it wins. KD. Yo, yo, if, I see. I and that's the thing now. See, be, prior to all the the year panning out, it was, I was like, okay, Starfield has a really strong chance. You know, the Metacritic, I'm, I'm still indifferent about. Which, uh, I, again, I don't know how much of an impact it really has on it, um, but um, if it manages to beat out any other game, obviously to win game of the year, that means it has to beat out multiple 90 plus rated critic games. And and, it, and I know it's not going to happen, yeah. but imagine the salt if they said Starfield. <laughs> I, I don't see that's a, uh, at this point. I'm happy if we just get a nomination. Yeah, I want the, I want the win, but the nomination would be where I don't think we're getting the win. I really don't. I truly you, you don't think Baldur Gate survives. I think Baldur's game. Gate is a better game, even though Starfield. Baldur's I, Gate is considered is, is essentially. And I'm just saying this from hearsay, but Baldur's Gate what is trash after Act Two. And, Baldur's Gate has more RPG elements, a more well thought of RPG elements, a more you know broad and elements than starfield does it's got better dialogue in my personal opinion it's got a better combat system i know you don't like turn-based but i love turn-based uh it's it's got a better companion system to what i was seeing like it's got everything like i put over 150 hours in in, in bonus game i still ain't beat it uh so my thing is the best case scenario for game of the year honestly is that boulders gate wins but I need Baldur's Gate to release on Xbox before that happens. Not that I want the game at all, but I just need just so it's not a it's, PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, the thing is, because it, it eliminates. But here's the thing, the maybe I don't discussion. know if they came out openly and said it, but I'm curious if Baldur's Gate is even like if it even qualifies to be in it because technically it's a it. It's it's an early access that came out like three years ago. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, and I said I don't think the shit counts. Should count. But the thing is, if it doesn't count, then like you know what I mean. I much rather it count because the thing is, is that if Starfield's not going to win, I do rather Baldur's Gate or Liza P win. If I if Liza P is nominated, I w- I would like see a stars to win. Nah, there is no way a game like that is winning game of the year. And I bet you it gets nominated over Liza P. This is my do you opinion. honestly truly think Liza P got a chance to get nominated for game of the year? Yeah, absolutely. I think if, you're if, delusional. If, if they're gonna nominate a game like fucking Control uh, a few years ago, and but that like, was a weak year. And, this no, is nah, a strong. Man, but year. yeah, and Liza P was it's the best from software uh, uh, Souls game not made by from software. Well, what is that saying? Like, it, it, they make they, one. That's it's that, the thing is that, that's that's like saying that that Nickelodeon, you know, Smash clone is the best Smash clone not made by Nintendo. Like <laughs> no, but the thing is, is that their game wasn't buggy. It performs very well. Something something that from software games don't do. Um, they all got frame t- uh, time issues, and you all you gotta do all this lore research and to see what the hell is going on. Liza P has a nice balance between all of that. It's one of the best games that came out this year. Um, yeah, but like I said, I feel like games like like Mario Wonder is great, but the thing is, Mario is Mario is Mario, right? I don't think it's anything new. It it's got new elements, but the general concept of the game is new. Like when you look at something like Ocarina of Time, mm-hmm. Majora's Mask, Skyward Sword, Wind Waker, those followed a similar formula, but they were different games. Uh, but Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, they changed that concept. They changed the mm-hmm. foundation. Uh, you know, when you look at something like this, I, I've only played, I've only beat the first two uh, mm-hmm. levels, mm-hmm. and it does feel just more like high quality 2d mario game platforming yeah. mario game you know how i know starfield's gonna get nominated for game of the year mm-hmm. is because every year right for the game of the year nominees they have to have an orchestra and starfield has one of the best soundtracks it, and see star's got a great uh soundtrack too now what the hell are they gonna do play the spider-man music from 2018 <laughs> It's like, stop it, man. No, no, stop no, no, it. About it. Oh, all right, what, what about? I'm trying to think what else could be potentially in the game. What, what are you going to play for Baldur's Gate 3? 
You're muted. Sorry, we repeat that. When, when are you gonna play for Baldur's Gate three? Baldur's Gate got a soundtrack, my dude. I, I don't know, but uh, I now, think... how are you not gonna play a game and then say what are they gonna play? Acting like you you played it to not think that has a good soundtrack. I don't know. That's kind of like you wouldn't have a good soundtrack. <laughs> no, it looks like it would have a good soundtrack. Oh man, but um, all right. So all right, so we'll see. Game of the year. We're, we're gonna be discussing this some more and more in the uh, in the future for sure, as things are revealed and the nominations are uh becomes available. Uh, September NPD or Circana, whatever they call it now. Are we talking about that Starfield yes, winner? Yes, man. Starfield, best-selling game of September, beating out multiple big releases for the month, despite being on Xbox Game Pass day one, man. I need to know your thoughts. I know you had a video ready and cooking and um and, and whatnot when this uh broke, but like, what are your thoughts? Like, just on Star, not even Starfield, just leading number one, but just like the overall top twenty for uh, September. And how um, Xbox has been able to, you know, finally impact uh, this list, this coveted, this highly coveted list. Um, I feel like it should definitely show that, you know, not everyone uses subscription services mm -hmm. like that. You know, some people that get that go watch like Spider-Man in the movie theater, they, they pick up the Blu-ray when it comes out. They don't just watch it on a, a subscription service and you know but i don't want to act like people that watch them subscription service are any less it's like look they paid that 15 dollars a month for you know six seven months to uh before that game came out and you know people sitting there clowning on pc oh you know but starfield uh you know pc held it's like i thought i thought the argument was starfield was trash yeah. it wouldn't matter where it is like, if Starfield was that bad, no one would have played it. No one would have picked it up. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? It, I'm wondering if those people that was buying Starfield just to vote it, uh, to to vote for it on Steam, uh, to give it a bad review, and, and then refund it. I wonder if they kept counted those those sold. Mm -hmm. Like, just, <laughs> maybe you have to keep it for a certain amount of time before they count it as a sell. Yeah, um, so it was number one on um, uh, number one best selling game, period. Uh, I think they said PC was leading the pack, but it was also the best selling game on Xbox. So, uh, yeah, every time people for like talking, three weeks straight, it was the best selling game on Xbox, yeah. even over Mortal Kombat. Yeah, so people keep saying it's only because PC it was like, no, but it was still the best selling game on Xbox as well. Like, <laughs> Um, so it did that despite Game Pass Day 1. Yes, early access uh, helped with that. Uh, you know, so you have Starfield at number one, uh, Mortal Kombat at number uh, two, the EA Sports uh, soccer game at number three, Madden at number four, Payday 3 at number five. That was also a day one Xbox Game Pass on both PC and Xbox, and it still managed to crack the top five in MPD. So, uh, you know, sometimes we get these little glimpses of Xbox Game Pass leading to more sales. And it, there's some, there is data that supports that. And there's some data that doesn't support that. But you can't say it's a lie when examples like these exist. NBA 2K24 at number six, which was surprising. You would think like if a game in a year, like in a thing like this, where you got everybody has access uh, to Starfield on Game Pass, you would think a, maybe a game like NBA 2K24 wins the is the number one seller right uh that's it's a major seller every year and starfield managed uh to outdo that the crew motor fest at number seven uh armor cord uh Ar armor core five or six whatever is uh was at number eight hogwarts legacy still in the top 10 at number nine call of duty modern warfare 2 now owned by microsoft number 10 Star Wars Jedi Survivor at number 11, Resident Evil 4 at number 12, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom at 13, Minecraft, also owned by Microsoft, at number 14, Mario Kart 8, number 15, Rainbow Six Siege. See, see, Star, see Thieves is on yeah. there? Grand Turismo 7. That's why you're Mario. reading the whole thing, yes, isn't it? You want to yes, get to see Thieves. Yes. And number, it's like 18 or 17 or number something. Number 19 like is Sea of Thieves. 
Uh, just ahead of Diablo 4, which is at number 20. Why did Sea of Thieves return to the top 20 in sales? And why is it beating Diablo 4? Yeah, so that means more people in September, in the month of, in the month of September, bought Sea of Thieves than they did Diablo 4. Why That's a that games happening? as a service. People are buying that game to be part of the games as a service. That that's that's insane. Like I was told that game is one of uh, Xbox's most successful uh, new IPs. Oh, it has to be. It has to be. And you know how I told you their last month rank and mm -hmm. uh, the last month rank of CFDs. I didn't notice it was it was a top forty game. I just thought people stopped buying CFDs after the first year because it was in Game Pass. It, it had its hot. Uh, people forget that CFDs was the number two best selling game. Um, in March of 2018, only falling behind Far Cry 4? 5? Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5. Yes. Far Cry That's 5 crazy. was the number one seller, and Sea of Thieves debuted at number two. And, th and Sea of Thieves was like the first major game to debut in Game Pass. That's when they were doing, uh, started the whole day and day initiative. And then a few months later, Say the K was number one in May. Uh, uh, and, and beating out whatever games that came out in May of that year, but State of Decay uh, uh, 2 was the number one seller uh, during a Game Pass era too, so people forget about that easily and I had to send some reminders out but shout out to Rare and Microsoft and Sea of Thieves for like, and the thing is, does Sea of Thieves ever been, get nominated for best ongoing game? I think it did once. Okay. I'm unsure if it did or not though. And I think I gotta ask you a question because people are giving me heat. Because I asked people if you were to play Sea of Thieves today, say the K2 today, do their review scores still hold? No. Sea of Thieves is a completely different game. But the problem is, is you know, I think you know, games as a service, maybe they should be revisited, but at the same time, you know, that that's opening like a really bad can of worms because it's like are are they going to say these games are good and that's why you should do it or it's going to be one of those things where it's like oh you know we're able to have a game have as a game get it out with missing features because we know that you know this is just the expectation for for these type of games and you know i feel like both arguments make sense and yeah. like it, it is kind of a you know a weird thing if that's going to work or not yeah, I think there's there's something that needs to happen with the review system because I don't think I don't think it's fair that yeah, sure, this is my opinion on a game when it launched, but that's that it has to stick with that stamp even though it's a much a better game today. It's still that that thing is permanent yet the current game is is is, is completely different. Um so I think, for example, I just think the, the the review system needs to change or it has to lose relevancy to a degree or we have to find another way uh, to recommend games that are live services because I don't think the current review model um, is right, especially in the direction that games are going. Um, we speaking of uh games of service and uh and, and, and games ongoing games halo infinite is seeing a resurgence man um you know it's uh player count on steams is, is increasing uh positive reception to uh i believe season five xbox is is back in uh among the top played games on the xbox the console um halo infinite people forget about that that was also you know a number uh debuted at number two when it released um Halo Infinite is is it's getting better. Uh and people forget what Halo Infinite was never a bad game. It's just the games as a service part of it. The fell. games as a service part, yeah, it just wasn't. I do think the single service. player could have used drastic improvements, but I even then I wouldn't say that it was a bad game. It's just I felt like the direction they took the single player, mm -hmm. I would have preferred a different direction. But I can't say the direction they chose to take was bad. Mm -hmm. It's just I would have liked, uh, you know, kind of like a Far Cry 5 aspect. Mm -hmm. I think I've said this before where it's like, you know, the whole point of the conversation, the whole point of the game was finding out how the, how the Banished was able to defeat the UNSC so bad. And I feel like it would have been nice if they 
you know, cut off the territory into certain generals mm -hmm. or certain captains that's in the banished army. And then, like, when you start that, you have to do certain things to get their elite out. And then you have to do things to get their, uh, you know, their, their first hand out. Then you, and then you get them out eventually. And, like, every time you go through these steps with these individual leaders that's part of the banish, it tells you what they did and why they were, you know, essential in defeating the UNSC. And then after you beat them all, Atriox is, is, is the whole territory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy for Halo's uh, multiplayer, but the campaign, the thing is, I love the campaign, man. I had so much fun playing that campaign, and I want more of it. Um, and I don't want to have to wait for a whole new Halo game to come out to, you know, to play more of a Halo campaign. Um, I've been contemplating going back and forth to do the, the campaign again in co-op uh, since it's, uh, uh, since co-op has been, you know, added into the game. But um I feel like the thing is about you know three four three and their decisions with the game is like don't listen to the fans, man. They need to continue. Yeah, the story I think arc, that's man. their biggest issue. Their biggest issue is they keep letting other people make their game. Yeah. Then it's like, dude, you know, we don't know where Halo Five would have been if they would have continued. Well, I do. I kind of was told like what the original ideal of Halo Infinite uh, Infinite was before the restructuring after the the reception of halo 5 mm -hmm. but it's just like sometimes you just got to tell sometimes people don't know what they want till they get it yeah so it's just like maybe some of the multiplayer aspects you could have just made a classic playlist and then keep going with that kind of like fortnite fortnite has a building mode and a non-building mode so it gives both fan bases what they want i think they should have did something like that mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm with you, and um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, 2020, uh, Xbox is, you know, they're, they're in good position, man. Um, uh, they, you know, they closed the deal. Phil Spencer had the interview on uh the Xbox podcast with Jeff Rubenstein, and uh, I forget what the other dude name is. Um, but uh, he confirmed Malik or something. Malik, Malik, yeah, Malik, yeah. He confirmed that. No, nothing's happening with Activision games uh, in Game Pass until 2024, man. That was a. I think we kind of knew that though. Like the moment they did the official mm -hmm. announcement, and we didn't see any type of uh, you know Game Pass announcement. I think we kind of knew that at that yeah. point. 2024, which okay, which is it, it, it's fine. I know they got they they got a big Call of Duty game to uh, release. They're gonna maximize. It's stuff. not even that too, like. Right now, they just came off of the hype of Starfield mm -hmm. and the for, uh, Forza. Mm -hmm. You know, they got all these, you know, really successful games that's went into Game Pass this year. Do they really need that kind of hype right now? Like, one would think it would overshadow the other ones. Like, right now, you probably got about a couple months of, you know, maybe dry months when it comes to, but then you got Persona coming out next month. Like, they're still putting more games into it. So do they really need the influx of games in Game Pass right now? Or would you save that for the beginning of next year where we'll probably be more of a drier time frame where you can actually get, you know, a lot of positive for the Game Pass announcements? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that if they announced that today, it would, be it would be hugely positive. People would love it. But what I am saying is maybe hold on to those, those bazookas and shoot when no one else has guns. Like... Yeah, that, I mean, true. You make a good point, right? So, you got all right. So, this is a couple of things that they got going on. They're going in. Uh, they they ramped up their marketing for some reason, right? Um, marketing's up. They're they're advertising Hellblade two. Um, and are they advertising to your uh, delight? Because you know that's coming. Yeah. I, is it is it how you like it? Hey, I mean, they did. It, it, yeah, yeah. I like. I didn't. I didn't expect what happened. They got a new marketing campaign that's coming around with just in time for basketball season and these football games. Um, they did the Las Vegas the dome advertisement, which is crazy. Apparently that costs like 400,000, yeah. like every time they do it or something like that, like, and, um, or it, 400 million or something like that. It's showing, uh, is, is giving love to their, their biggest game. Starfield was a big part of that Forza. Uh, they advertise, you know, cyberpunk. I know they got a good relationship there. Hellblade two. And, and the thing about this Hellblade, because we got the dev, the dev diary, Hellblade is is closer than we probably think, man. When do you think we're getting Hellblade 2? 
March. March. And when do we find that out? Do we find that out at the Keeleys or do we find out at the 2024 Xbox game Dev Direct, whatever? It is? Dev Direct. I, I here's the thing. I think they're going to show something else at the Keeley Rewards. I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, that. I think they're going to show something um, people are asking for. So I think that's probably going to be there, you know. And, and I think that it's best to show Hellblade on your own stage. You've gave Keeley multiple announcements to that game. Just go ahead and show the combat, the stuff everyone wants on your stage. Do it on your event, your time. You know, I think at the beginning of January, we'll get an announcement for a direct at the end that they're going to show Vowed. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's that indie game that, that people are loving too, mm-hmm. made by the Banner franchise. Uh, or t- I can't... Towerborn? Yeah, Towerborn. Actually interested in that game. Yeah. Uh, they're going to probably show off uh, Hellblade as well. And maybe, uh, you know, a fourth game that maybe we don't even know about. Uh, so you know it's going to be interesting. It's and uh, Todd Howard said Indiana Jones. We'll, uh, we'll we're here more next year. And keep in mind that leak, Indiana Jones was supposed to come out last year. Mm-hmm. So you know it would make sense that you know maybe we'll see that at this event as well, and that will show gameplay. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, so they got the end of the year. Obviously, they have uh, you know they got. Pretty much Call of Duty is pretty much theirs. They don't have like the marketing rights, but I, I saw like a, a, a marketing banner with Xbox and GameStop. I forgot who took a picture. Was it Forte? I know he works at GameStop. Um, so, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to give some special treatment to Call of Duty. Uh, so, yeah, you open the year, it's dry. Why not? First quarter, uh, that'll be a nice way to up. Uh, Game Pass uh, additions with uh, a massive Call of Duty, <laughs> ten years of Call of Duty. I think they'll do some something like that, Call of Duty, and some uh, other games. Uh, they'll have probably like an Xbox Wire or whatever for that. Um, and then because they have to, the thing is, it's the top of the year. We're going to now want to try to figure out. All right, what's what's the games of twenty twenty four? What's the biggest games was twenty four? And when does the marketing campaign start? Um, so far, we know about Hellblade 2, Towerborn, and Avowed. Those are the only ones that's been confirmed for 2024, right? By Xbox First Party and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, right? Those are the only ones that's been, like, confirmed first party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I, I think we're going to see more, though. You know, I, I think, you know, 2024 going to be another good year for Microsoft. And I think Game Pass, they're... They're amping up again next year in Game Pass, uh, but I, I I don't think people are ready. You know, I, I there I've been on record saying that so it's like it's like last generation at the beginning. You know, Xbox had a certain uh, a certain am, uh, amount of time to respond to everything that was going on. Yeah, and then they didn't meet that, and then PlayStation started dropping games over and over again. I think that's about to happen to PlayStation. PlayStation had a certain amount of time. To respond to Xbox over buying all these studios. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the stuff they bought is going to be able to respond to the stuff that Microsoft bought. And, you know, people can sit there. You can debate on the, the quality of the games. That, that, that's fine. You know, they do got to show these games before we really go on it. But in terms of just output, mm-hmm. I think for, for every first party... You know, the only way that they're going to be able to say it is if Square Enix is bells them out. But I don't think Square Enix is belling them out anymore. Oh, yeah, Square Enix got uh, they got they they got the Final Fantasy at the start of next year, in February. Yeah, I I I I think that that gravy train's over. I think the new CEO is like, company about to go under. We can't be doing this shit anymore. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Final and, Fantasy, and, uh, Final Fantasy fourteen beta, uh, mid January to February on Xbox. Um, sounds about right. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, I've been meaning to pick your brain about this is because the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people have been, you know, you know, asking uh, what's Sony's big game because people ignore the fact that Sony only dropped. Spider-Man is Sony's drop for the year. You know, it, it helps that it was a great game, right? It's a great game. So, you know, it's a big game. Great game is going to sell well. But. That was their only drop. It would have wor- only truly worked if Microsoft had nothing 
for yeah. the whole year. Yeah. But that's not the case. Even if you feel, you know, I personally feel like Starfield was done wrong Metacritic wise on the Xbox side. Yeah. But even if you look at that 83, what, um, 80, uh, 83, 84 on Metacritic, it's an 87 on PC. Then you look at like Motorsport, it was like a, a 84, 85 or yep. something like that. Yep. Yep. High Fry Rush in 88? Yeah, in 88, yeah. And then you got Spider-Man with a 91. So it's just like, look, like, you probably had the better games on PlayStation this year, but you had uh, the better time of playing on Xbox this year. Yeah, I can, I, I can agree with that. Um, and so... Place it. So that's the thing is that now we're going into 2024 and it's looking a lot like 2023, right? In terms of PlayStation, because they, you know, obviously uh, Square Enix opened a year, carried the year for PlayStation this year with, you know, they opened up with Forspoken and they rebounded with Final Fantasy 16 and they had a couple other games here and there that were, you know, hit or miss. Um, and um but next year what's happening again it's final fantasy 7 uh remake sequel and there is um not only that there's also the foam stars a uh, game which is a early 2024 game uh so that's also by square enix and i don't know what is first party from playstation in 2024 whereas xbox we know uh, you know, according to some people on Twitter, they're they saying Wolverine. Like, I guess some Sony is having a year turnover for a big, another big AAA t- t- title. Like, look, and Soniac has been delivering, but no one is that good. Yeah. Uh, if they do kudos, that that would be great. But I don't think that uh, I don't think that's happening. Um, Wolverine is like a 2025, 2026 game. More than likely. And. The thing is, what based off those, you know, FTC leaks, right? We we all right, so we can confirm Towerborn, Hellblade, Avowed, Microsoft uh, Flight Sim, twenty twenty four. Those four games, most likely Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, and what is it Doom's Z- Year Zero? Yeah, and if Indiana Jones doesn't come out next year, it's probably going to be like like March of of twenty twenty five. Yes. What about the the, the Doom Year Zero? That's weird. We still ain't heard nothing about that. Once that that's like, you know how they did like a, a shadow drop of Hi Fi Rush this year. Mm-hmm. Once that they shadow drop Doom at the beginning of next year. I don't know if they'll shadow drop Doom. I don't know, but Do- I think Hi Fi Rush being shadow drop. Let's be real. Hi Fi Rush being shadow drop showed them how effective a shadow drop is. Where it's like, even if they had games that was close to the vest because they wanted to surprise people, mm-hmm. it, it, I can see a realm where the PR and marketing's meeting. It was like, if Hi Fi Rush did this, what happens if Doom zero, Year Zero? What could that do if we shadow drop that? All right. When you all right, all right. When you, you fact, this is how. All right. When you factor this, this is all right. Now I kind of lean towards your side. When you factor in historically with Doom, Dishonored, you know, Deathloop, and Ghostwire Tokyo did. You know how they had like the marketing for those games, but they didn't do perform well in terms of unit sales or stuff like that. You know what I mean? They were, you know, they put the marketing dollars behind them, but they didn't like sell a lot. Um, with Doom being an established IP, and you can probably shadow drop a new game like that and have a bigger reaction than what Hi Fi Rush had. And, and, and not to mention, like, you could take a little hit, like, financially, but. Like any other game, like you did, like let's say they did like God of War or something on PlayStation. But the problem with that is like they got to market those games a little bit more than play Xbox games because of Game Pass. Mm -hmm. Because like they're not going to really, especially on the Xbox crowd, people are going to buy it, but it's not going to be that degree. You know what I'm saying? People are mainly going to Game Pass this game. So it's like you can financially probably make more sense to shadow drop a game in Xbox than it would be to shadow drop something like. 
the next God of War or even a DLC for that matter, because they're going to want to market those games to have the most effective top line dollar mm -hmm. sales that they can have. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Because Steam's going to buy that game regardless. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the year is looking, you know, you know, great. And, and it's good to see Microsoft and the Xbox put marketing dollars into the console, into their games to see Starfield on a big screen, to see Sinu. Uh, I'm just I'm also just happy to see like Hellblade being like shown in, in marketing, like because it's a part of their new ad campaign. It was part of that globe thing. And they had the dev driver. And it's like it's making it like, all right, this game's probably coming. It's probably when it is, I think. I mean, Towerborn and Hellblade will be, probably open up the years as like quarter one and quarter two uh, games, and um, and, and I think both games, I, I believe, uh, Towerborn and Hellblade two will both be like well positively uh, received, uh, but they do need to show uh, some gameplay of Hellblade. I am looking forward to seeing some gameplay of Hellblade some action packed gameplay of Hellblade. That's what I'm hoping we see very soon, whether that's at the game awards or if it's at their uh, developer direct, but we, we got to see some more uh, Hellblade in terms. Of yeah. I, I think we'll see more Hellblade. I think they're not going to not show us the combat. I, I think that it's either they're hiding that because they're unsure about it, or that's the most attractive thing about Hellblade. Mm -hmm. And they want to show that right before the game comes out. Yeah, because the graphics, like the graphics, is still holding up. Like even in the dev diary, they showed you what the the in game character model looks like. This it's like it's top tier. It, it is definitely a uh, uh, top tier. And, and they got like one of the lead people that made the God of War combat to yeah. So like early on yeah, too. Yeah, so yep, it, it was early on. It was like it was a it was shortly after uh, they announced the game and. And uh, the girl that placed it, and remember, they put her in, like, these combat trainings. That was part of, I think, Dev Divery 1 or 2. Uh, they put her in all this combat training and, and capture her uh, doing combat because they want to make it as, you know, authentic as possible. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I am definitely looking forward uh, uh, to what they do with that. Um, trying to think, what else uh, did we miss? I think we... We we captured uh pretty much the topics you know obviously Starfield bestseller of twenty twenty uh, September twenty twenty three is uh, is number seven for the entire year, which is uh, very impressive as well. Um, we have um, uh, you know the Halo resurgence. Uh, we have uh, the game of the year uh, discussion. Like if Starfield, I think we got pretty much everything we could do this yeah, week. Yeah, um, yeah. So we'll see. You know, I I expect next uh, this coming week. I expect some things going to happen. Some more conversations are going to happen. Uh, you expect Sony to put out a press release of Spider-Man is surpassing 5 million in three days. Is that going to happen? Yes, no? Uh, I would think. I would think this game is going to sell very well. You know, it, it, the problem is, is like PS5s, they are bundling it, apparently. That's what I was oh, trying. I don't okay. know if that's so true or not. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. So right. if that if they are bundling it, then you know that's gonna be very effective. I, I don't every time I see a game that's so 40, 50 million bundled, I'm like, that's a cat. That 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 that's a cop out. Like it's yeah. like you fluffed the amount of copies by far even if you put the price of the game on on, on the console yeah. bundle, like most of the time when it comes to PlayStation 5s, like that's the only way you're getting it. You're going to have to buy the bundle. And I know people that, you know, I remember I bought a couple bundles during the Xbox One generation and I sold the game immediately because mm -hmm. I already either had it or I wasn't interested. Yeah. Now, Spider-Man is a little bit different because it's a lot more appeal. So I doubt that more, like, a lot of people are going to be selling it. Uh, but, you know, some people just buy PlayStations and Xboxes to play Madden and Call of Duty. They don't give, yeah. I don't care about these games. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, and 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 that, and we can't uh, pretty much uh, forget about that. Yo, did you hear about the rumor? I just want to make sure it is like there, there was this Xbox Paramount rumor. Um, oh yeah, about them buying all Paramount's uh, IPs license, or some shit yeah. like that. Like any 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 smoke to that? I haven't heard nothing about that. Okay, because I'm trying to think who what characters are in Paramount that would would be worth making a game out of. Because if I mean, Star Trek's the only recognizable one, then I don't want no parts of it. 
So who owns what, what, what Paramount IPs does Paramount, Paramount own? So be List of assets owned by Paramount. Film. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm they own a bunch of Nickelodeon stuff. Okay, so Ninja Turtles. Um, Maybe. Mm. Uh, Indiana Jones. That that's Lucas. Lucas did Appar- Oh, franchise. Maybe it's just stuff that they that that's on there. Okay. What does Paramount actually own? Okay, so they keep telling me like Paramount owns a lot of companies. Oh, okay. The okay, they uh it's I don't know if this is property. true. Mm-hmm. Uh Yellowstone, The Godfather. Okay. Um, uh Mission Impossible, Top Gun, Star Trek, Force Gump, Titanic, Transformers. Mm. Billy Hill uh uh Billy Hill's cop, Grease, Gladiator, Saving Private Ryan, Indiana Jones, it keep, the first four films they own. Okay. They probably own some marketing something for the for that. Wolf of Long Street, and Stellar, Scream, Fraser, Cheers. Man, I Apparently I- they got they got some uh they yeah, they, they do own uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle apparently. They they have a lot of like stake and, and stuff too. All right, so it says Microsoft may be interested in acquiring Paramount or its license for use in Xbox Studios game projects. Um, I know Paramount did the Halo movie, a Halo show, right? For them, yeah, and it was horrible. And it was horrible, yeah, yeah. So Star Trek, Mission Impossible. SpongeBob, South Park, Yellowstone, NCIS, but what the hey, uh... maybe we're seeing it wrong, and they're not trying to to license IP. They're trying to license more like stuff like Halo to them to make TV shows about. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, because I'm about to say there's nothing that nothing about that would excite me, honestly. Um, the Xbox cover came out. Uh, the, the Xbox Series X covers came out. Starfield. Um, I, I don't have it. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna get it. It's a little bit too late in the game. They should have released it the day Starfield came out. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's there. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. But yeah. But there we go. I mean, that's it for the podcast today. We just hit an hour. Thank you guys for joining us. Attic as always is great. We will see you guys next weekend. I'm pretty sure we'll have some uh, more to talk about. And hopefully I'll be done with Spider-Man and I can give my, I have my full review out on that. I got actually got to start capturing gameplay. I have not have done that so far, um, but I'll probably hook it up uh, against the capture card fairly soon. But man, thank you, Addict. It's a pleasure. Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning. If you're on the other side of the globe, we are out of here. Peace. Yeah, hating ass bitches that watch this.